Good day, Chris here. Welcome back to Clicks. Welcome back to Azales TV. In this video, I finish your hands by cutting out the final form before sanding and polishing. This is going to take a while. Should we do a jump cut? Let's do a jump cut. Okay, many hours of sanding and filing and I've got this. I've already done the hour hand and I'll show you that later on, but I've done this minute hand. So next job is going to be to set the brass arbor collar in here for the pivot. I'll epoxy that in place and get it flush with the top surface, which is this surface bottom surface I've cut a tiny little groove in there for the set screw it doesn't go all the way through to the front so at the front it just looks like a continuous ring and prior to that I marked the back just like that so I know that this this is the back because no point in polishing the back because you're never gonna see it so next up will be as I say putting a brass collar in flipping it over sanding it flush and then going through progressively finer grits of sandpaper right, that's the elbow collar glued in place I've got this threaded brass rod here screwed in to plug the hole where this set screw goes in and I put wax on these threads to stop it from binding up the epoxy. Don't need that anymore really. I've gone over it with 120 grit sandpaper, got it fairly level with everything. Next is going to be doing it with 180 grit and then 400 grit for a final finish before I apply the polish. I've got some gaps around the collar there which I'm going to fill with wood glue when I do the final 400 grit finish. So it'll make sawdust which will plug the hole and there'll be no gaps over it, hopefully. So let's get sanding. First one, 180 grit. Going in one direction only, so I'm going with the grain of the wood to try and get the wood as smooth as possible. It doesn't have to be exactly flat all the way along, so I don't have to do any fancy stuff like doing that won't really help me in this case. I just want the wood flat and smooth. Okay, where there is smooth. So going back and forth, forth like this helps to get into the grain. Gets rid of all the high spots. That's 180 grit. Got a nice shine on that inner arbor, the arbor collar. Now for 400 grit. Whoop whoop. It's coming along low. The gap is closing up because it is filling up with the sawdust. So once I've done, added this wood glue into it, it will polish nice and smooth. No gaps. All right. Last grit. 400. Let's do this. I only need a very small amount. I'm actually getting none at all. That's helpful, isn't it? Nope, I just hadn't opened it enough. Herp derp. There we go. Now I'll push this into the gap. All the way around. A bit more than that. That's better. There we go. Doesn't matter if I've got any in, this, in the inner hole because I couldn't ream that out. It's not too much of a problem. Okay, it's starting to slough off now, the wood glue. So if I sand it more, it should generate enough dust to fill the hole.
Yes, it's working. Excellent. Bigger bit of 400 grit. Because more bigger is more better. That's nice. Here we go, look. Rightio. And here we go with the finished hands. Got a nice shine on there. There's a set screw for the arbor. There on that one. And here on this one. This one, the hand is slightly thicker. So I didn't have to cut a groove. I could just drill a hole straight away through it. And that works all right. On here as well, I've got a bit of a gap, which I've filled with epoxy. There's a bit more of a gap, so you've got a dark band. But that won't matter because this hand is the other hand. It goes behind the minute hand. So that goes like that and it will hide everything. So next up will be to fit these on the clock. I've spent the day actually aligning the clock and making sure it all runs properly and everything else. I had some problem, problems with binding and I solved that by giving the gears a bit of a sanding and also tightening the clutch. I just took the clutch apart, pulled the spring out, stretched the spring, put it, away, put it all back together again and that worked. So let's stick these in the clock and get it running. Well that's the hands in place. They fit very nice and nothing's binding up. The hands are clear of each other. There's a nice gap of about two or three millimeters between it, both of them. They line up very well. So let's power this up and let's pull it up somewhere and then just leave it running overnight and see how it goes. But for now, that's it done. Well, that's interesting because my LiPo battery has died. And not only died, but it's dropped below the safer voltage to charge it. I'm getting no volts out of it. So I'm having to power the clock with a USB power bank through the circuit which I made for programming the thing because I can't program it, I can't power it rather from the USB at the bottom because it goes for the charge circuit which needs this. So I'm going to need to make some sort of circuit to power it at least temporarily until I get a new battery. But I'll leave it running on this overnight and see if it works and it seems to be like it's keeping correct to time. It's all going great. So for now, that's it for this week. Next week, I'll start work on the front case. Um, I'll see what design I can come up with for a chapter in. And I've also got an idea for the blank spaces on the hands here. So stay tuned for that in the upcoming weeks. But for now, thank you very much for watching. That's it for this week. Stay tuned, and if you like what you saw, get subscribed and hit the notification button so you know when, when I upload next. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions or any tips or anything else, or anything you want to share. Um, leave a like and thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next Tuesday.